welcome to NBC Sports Bay Area home of the authentic fan on a summer Sunday in St. Louis Giants Cardinals for the final game of this three game series at Bush Stadium Dave Fleming Hunter Pence making his Giants broadcast debut great to have Hunter with us as well and no time wasted we are ready to go Austin Slater will lead off against the Cardinals left hander Wade LeBlanc and here we go the deciding game of this series the first pitch fastball right down the middle to Austin Slater for strike one it's great to have you with us Hunter Wade LeBlanc a guy that in your career you faced he's been around a long time. Yeah, Wade LeBlanc, he's a, he's a crafty lefty, been pitching a while. Just a short stint with the with the Cardinals starting. He's got three starts, 2.77 ERA. Uh, but I like our matchup. I like our lineup against this guy. We got some patient hitters, and uh, you know I think it's going to be a it's going to be a good game to watch uh, him battle these these patient power Giants righties. Austin Slater swings through that fastball. And the count is one and two to Slater. This is, as Hunter said, is the fourth start with the Cardinals. Four seven eight earned run average fifth start overall with St. Louis he's pitched pretty well Cardinals have had a lot of injuries in their starting rotation so Wade LeBlanc trying to fill a spot Slater on the ground Arenado cuts over and throws out Slater to start the ball game. Giants lineup brought to you by your Bay Area GMC dealers Slater at the top Solano Yastrzemski rough Wilmer Flores Brandon Crawford great to see Brandon back in there he's been swinging the bat so well took yesterday off at least at the start Mike Talkman gets his first start in the second half Chadwick Trump is the catcher for Johnny Cueto who will pitch and bat ninth as Donovan Solano comes up with one out and nobody on the day after the Giants lineup was pretty quiet against the Cardinals left hander Kim who pitched so well Solano goes after that first pitch and pulls it foul. Donovan had two of the Giants three hits against Kim. Plays off that high fastball. Umpires today. Todd Titchener is behind home plate calling balls and strikes. Tony Rondazzo at first. Chad Whitson at second. Jim Reynolds, the crew chief, is down the third base side. Call to strike. Titchener gives him the high strike. So it's one and two. By the standards of St. Louis, it's a nice day. This time of year, it can be smoking hot in the Midwest. Not too bad today. Giants got a break this weekend. Solano kind of punches one into right field, and Donovan Solano's got the first hit of the day for the Giants. And we'll set the Cardinals defense for you as well as we get started. O'Neill in left, Bader in center, Carlson in right. On the infield, Arenado, DeYoung, Carpenter, and Goldschmidt. LeBlanc throwing to Yadier Molina. A lot of gold gloves out there for the Cardinals. Yeah they got they got a really good defense they've always been known to play just they call it Cardinal baseball if you talk to anyone in the organization and they they are highly are on the on the fundamentals and every time you go in to play St. Louis you know uh, they're going to be fundamentally sound so no surprise to all the gold gloves. Mike Dostremski goes after that first pitch from LeBlanc strike one. He has hit two home runs on Friday night help the Giants win the series opener Cardinals bounce back and got a win yesterday. Got to love that two homers to start the second half and he was really kind of heating up late he had a tough start and really finding his own in his swing just incredible incredible opportunity to play with him for the one little stint that I had last year. This is one of the greatest young leaders I've ever played with can't say enough good things about Yastrzemski his presence in the clubhouse and his presence on the field. Well I think he's poised to have a big second half you said it he's been banged up a lot this year has not been able to kind of get in his normal rhythm he's healthy now as LeBlanc bounces that one Yadier Molina keeps Solano at first base this was Friday night Yastrzemski against Adam Wainwright to put the Giants on the board that was impressive to keep it fair down the right field line and then against T.J. McFarland who he just absolutely owns. A home run to break the game open, give the Giants some cushion. They went on to win seven to two. And that home run against the lefty, he's always been good against left-handers. Has worked ahead of the count here, three and one. 
That's a really good take right there. And, and LeBlanc's been just off the corner if you've been watching this little box. And that's the battle with LeBlanc is he wants to get you to chase that, that pitch right there. It looks good all the way and then just dives out of the zone. So three and one with Solano at first. Yastrzemski got underneath that one. Kind of into no man's land. Carlson coming in hard and he can't catch it. Now he'll pop up and throw to second. His throw is offline. And the Giants get a big break there. It'll be a hit for Yastrzemski, but then Carlson, who I think was sure that he had a chance to force out Solano, couldn't do it. Yeah, this is uh, this is a good little start your day off. We'll take it. The tough part on this is for Solano to get to second here, and he definitely had a chance to throw him out. But you you're in that weird window. Unfortunately, uh, he just he rushed the throw, and uh, we get a base knock right there. Start the day off good. Get an opportunity. Yeah, so that's a break for the Giants. Two on one out, and Darren Ruff, a guy you circled before the game as somebody you thought might be a good matchup for LeBlanc. Yeah I like all the Giants hitters against LeBlanc the right handed hitters just because the Giants lineup is just patient and powerful. That's a good description of Ruff who's having a really solid year for the Giants. Not playing a ton missed some time with injury but when he's been in there he's been an impact player. Chance to do some damage early he takes low ball two. Good example of a couple pitches against LeBlanc. He wants you to chase. If you can force him into the strike zone, you have a good chance to have success. Those takes are so underrated, and it's you want to get in there. You're so excited for your first at bat. You've done all your work. And there's a lot of power in taking 3-0 runners at first and second. He start you start to feel the pressure, and you start setting up the lineup. The later guys behind you, the more pitches you work. It's just it's good baseball. You got Wilmer Flores who always seems to swing the bat well against lefties waiting on deck three and oh to rough and he takes one looked like he was taken all the way. Still can be very choosy here in a three one count. Cardinals overload the left side playing rough to pull if he hits it on the ground straight up in the outfield. That is high ball four. Well our indeed player resume Darren Ruff last seven times he's been in there against a left handed pitcher he has mashed home run three doubles four walks big time on base slugging percentage that's why he's on the roster it's not like he can't face right handers but he's specifically with the Giants to do damage against the lefties. Man I love his matchup against LeBlanc that cutter just goes right into his bat path and honestly the the patience and the discipline to take all of those just super borderline. Homer Flores takes strike one bases loaded one out great chance here for the Giants. Wilmer who really heated up before the all star break has had a quiet relatively quiet couple games in St. Louis. Chance to do something loud here. Right at the knees. Perfect pitch 0 2. Solano, who got the first hit at third. Yastrzemski got the little blue pit at second. And Darren Ruff drew the walk to load him up. He's at first. The 0 2. Called strike three. Wilmer didn't like it. So two down that's big out for LeBlanc and the Cardinals on three pitches three perfect pitches. Yeah this is just absolutely painted a little too close to take and you know he gets the call right there it's a that's a perfect pitch and you know Flores has such good hands um, but just that late break caught the corner and got the call. So Todd Titchener who I mean you look at the the umpire scouting reports typically he's pretty tight with his strike zone so far in this game those borderline pitches have gone to LeBlanc Crawford stands in and Brandon swings at the first pitch skies one to left in the ballpark 
That's O'Neal to make the catch, and the Giants threaten but do not score. So after a half inning, Cueto to the mound. Cardinals coming up. Now the Cardinals will come up in the bottom of the first, and the Cardinals lineup brought to you by your Bay Area GMC dealers. Amazing how the Giants mix and match day to day. The Cardinals lineup looks almost exactly the same as it has for the first two games. The one difference. Matt Carpenter in there for Tommy Edmond, but you got Carlson, Goldschmidt, Arenado, O'Neill, the power at the top of the order for St. Louis. Paul DeYoung's gotten hot. Shortstop hitting seventh, Bader and LeBlanc at the bottom of the lineup. And those Cardinals will face the Giants right hander, Johnny Cueto Hunter, who will make his 15th start of the year for the Giants. Yeah, Dia de Cueto. It's always fun. He's great in day games, brings the energy, and I uh, love to watch this guy work. His second straight start, kind of an oddity because he last pitched 12 days ago, but his last start came against the Cardinals. So, second straight start against a team that he faced many, many times all his years in the National League Central with the Reds. Dylan Carlson goes after the first pitch from Cueto and fouls it out of play. The Elk Grove native, Dylan Carlson, who had a big double in yesterday's Cardinals win. Having a solid rookie year, they think ultimately he's going to be a very good player. 0 oh 2. Yeah, I think there was a question with the Cardinals. They were they were trusting a lot of young outfielders, and all of these young outfielders for the Cardinals have had excellent seasons. And you know, you definitely didn't expect when you trade for Arenado for the Cardinals to be under 500 at the break. So a little bit of a shock there, but um, that's baseball. It can get crazy. Cardinals are feeling a lot of urgency a lot of pressure to get that season going the Brewers have played well in the central but the Cardinals are definitely still within striking distance slider from Cueto misses down low but with the trade deadline looming a couple weeks away now I mean the Cardinals I think are feeling like they need to start making their move Carlson went after that very high fastball right into the defense. Ruff got back, found the bag. One away. Giants defense will set it for you here. Brought to you by Geico. Talkman in left today. Slater moves over to center field. Steven Duggar gets the afternoon off, at least at the start. Yastrzemski in right. Crawford back in there. That's great to see. Flores at third. Solano at second. Darren Ruff playing first base with Chadwick Trump. Ian Cueto have a nice rapport. He's doing the catchy today. Brandon had the hamstring cramp on Friday night. Just saying the word hamstring makes me nervous. And so I think the Giants really dodged a bullet. It was only a cramp. It wasn't a strain. And he's back in there after a day off. Goldschmidt ripped that one foul. Something I don't think Crawford gets enough credit for is every day. He's, I mean, and he's really smart about when those little things happen. He doesn't overdo it. He's so smart and so intelligent and in tune with his body. And, uh, you know, usually that would scare me with most players, but he's just so smart and getting him back out there. It's hot, it's sweaty, it's St. Louis. I've had nightmares of day games in St. Louis. And uh, so he's he's the one of the best in the business at playing every day. Hunter's still sweating a couple of years after last playing a game at Bush Stadium. Cueto strikes out Paul Goldschmidt with a great changeup. And this was what happened the other night. He was in the box late in the game, took a swing, immediately sort of grabbed the back part of that left hamstring. That always makes me nervous a little bit. He ended up getting a hit in the at bat. As you could tell, he wasn't feeling 100%. He came out of the game there. One thing Dave Greshner said is you almost never see a hamstring strain on a swing. Hamstring strains typically come on some sort of running motion. That made me feel a little better. Yeah, you didn't see it like really grab. I think he really did just have a cramp because you get dehydrated in those hot games in St. Louis and it's hard to get all the electrolytes you need. And so he like I said, he's really smart. I trust him more than most anyone. Uh, if I was up to bat, I would have ran in and popped it. And, you know, so I, just, <laughs> I love how smart he is and how disciplined he is. It's 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 fascinating to watch on a day to day basis. Crawford back at shortstop today. Having a spectacular year. 
Fresh off the All Star game in Denver. Two down, nobody on. Cueto trying to make it a 1 2 3 inning. Arenado hit a home run against Johnny. And that last start in San Francisco. That was close, but called a ball. With the full twist, a little shimmy. He wanted that one, three and two. It, it's a great pitch. I mean, that's as nasty a spot as you can put it. Love it when Johnny's locating like that. Wilmer Flores is standing out there going, now wait a minute. Close pitches when I was up there were strikes. 3 2, Arnado smashes one foul. Here's that Cueto. Here come, yeah. What do you call that? You call that Johnny being Johnny. <laughs> he has the playful spirit, and pitching is about deception. That's when you know he's feeling pretty good early in a game. That was kind of the full deal there. 3 2, Arnado pops it up. Bright sunshine up above. Darren Ruff in front of the coach's box for out number three. Nice start for Cueto. Giants will come up in the second against LeBlanc, a nothing, nothing game. Giants and the Cardinals for the final time in 2021 in the regular season. Sunday afternoon baseball from Bush Stadium, no score. And inning number two, Mike Talkman getting a chance to play today. Takes a little bit low from Wade LeBlanc. Talkman coming off the injured list before this series. Had really been struggling, wasn't fully healthy. Giants feel like batting practice has been better. The at bats have looked a little bit better, and they're hoping that Mike Talkman, a player they really believe in, can sort of get his offensive season going again. Yeah, when he gets swinging, everything else that he brings mentality, attitude, defense, it's electric. So just a presence on the field and you know he's he's a good hitter he's going to get healthy and he's going to get get it going and he's he's definitely putting in the work and it's it's fun to watch this guy play on a day to day basis it's a good way to put it cuz he does he offers a lot outside of just production at the plate he'll take pitches makes a pitcher work he'll draw walks we've seen the two spectacular highlight defensive plays two of the plays of the year for the giants the two home run robberies against Pujols and against Soto Changes the game in a major way. The Giants do the little things right. They they play some hardcore baseball, hardcore defense. Might have chased ball four there. Went after an inside pitch. It's three and two. Gabe Kapler was kind of debating whether to play Slater in left or Talkman in left, and whoever wasn't in left field. In center field. So Slater gets the nod for center today. Talkman, the left fielder, hitting seventh. And he hits that one hard up the middle, but right where Paul DeYoung is playing him. That is out number one. D Download the MLB app to get in game video highlights, live pitch by pitch, breaking news, player updates, stat leaderboards, and more for your San Francisco Giants. I love the app. I use the app. How could we do without it? It's hard to remember what we did before there was an MLB app. You can get me in trouble at dinner sometimes. Making <laughs> check in the game day. <laughs> Chadwick Trump stands in. Outside ball one. Good news from Gabe Kapler before the game today about Buster Posey. There's a chance that Buster's going to be activated before tomorrow's game in L.A. Giants are hopeful of that. Posey's missed some time now that that foul ball that caught his thumb the last road trip before the All Star break so that's a couple weeks ago now. But Posey caught a bullpen from Jake McGee a couple days ago started to take some swings in the cage feeling more comfortable doing that. So all signs pointing toward Posey being ready sooner rather than later. That's exciting news Posey having just a, one of those magical seasons and every one of his at bats so fun to watch Trumpy though him and Cueto have a lot of a lot of synergy we like to call it and uh, man Trumpy's 
Trump is an exciting guy, but his swing right now is looking connected. He's he's getting some getting some damage in there at the plate as well. Guy's got real power. Pass for time. Chance feel very comfortable when Trump is behind the plate. So he and Kurt Casale have done a nice job while Buster's been out. Ball three. Chance of making LeBlanc work. A lot of long at bats. They loaded the bases in the first inning. Now the second straight hitter here in the second to get the count to three and two. Trump. Skies one foul out of play. Trump is looking comfortable here. He's definitely got that cheetah pounce balance energy. Looks like he's seen him pretty good here. I like I like the, the the swings he's taking right now. In the big leagues this year, only 14 at bats coming into today. He does have a home run. That one should be playable. Carpenter, you can hear him making the call and the catch. Two down. Coors Light beating the pressure. That was sort of along the theme of making Wade LeBlanc work. Most pitches per plate appearance in the big leagues. Yankees and then the Tigers, Mariners, Giants, White Sox all kind of grouped together. Giants a very patient offense. And that's even without Brandon Belt, who's one of their grinders. Buster Posey's missed some time. It's the philosophy of this team on offense. Cueto. Never boring. Swings at the first pitch. Goldschmidt's going to handle this one. And the Giants are retired in order. So we'll go to the bottom of the second in St. Louis. Giants Cardinals. Nothing, nothing. BC Sports Bay Area is brought to you by WebEx. The future of work is hybrid. WebEx by Cisco. From Bush Stadium, the new Bush Stadium in St. Louis, Giants Cardinals, no score, bottom of the second. Johnny Cueto had a nice clean first inning, retire the Cardinals in order, which against the top of their lineup, it's always a big deal. Tyler O'Neill, Yadier Molina, and Matt Carpenter lined up here for the second against Cueto. Dave Fleming, Hunter Pence, great to have Hunter with us on a Giants broadcast for the first time. Hunter's been a part of our Giants. Uh, Studio pregame postgame stuff before. Lots of memories in that ballpark, Hunter. Lots of big games against the Cardinals. I mean, this is a dream, Flem, to be calling a game with you, a Giants game. I'm living a dream right now. O'Neill change up real good one. Strike one. Flem, what do you think about how Johnny? Kind of builds into his starts. Talk to me about watching him do that and his his mastery of when to when to go and when to when to nibble. I do think Johnny is different from the modern approach to pitching, which is often full max effort at, at all times, 100% until you got no more. You got O'Neill to chase there. Johnny is not like that. He'll add and subtract and mix and match and save some velocity. I think the other big difference for me with Cueto is in the era of intense game planning and preparation. There's a little shimmy. O'Neill pulls it foul. Johnny's a guy who wants to be out on the mound and feel what's working that day, see what the hitter's swing looks like that day, not necessarily what the hot zones and count tendencies are for a hitter. He wants to feel how the game feels in the moment. And that's to me what makes Johnny Cueto different from a lot of pitching styles in 2021. There are not many guys who do that either. <laughs> the yeah. shimmy. Yeah he, he invented it. He's 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 a student of the game and he's out there. He's studying your stance. He's studying how your practice swing. It's pretty incredible. He watches how you warm up and, and tries to put his pitches. Now when he left out over the plate O'Neill sends Slater all the way back. One away. I always love this this comment. He said if they're if they're warming up and they're kind of doing the low one, he's like, they want a low one, throw them a high one. If they're warming up and you see some of the guys.
kind of doing this up, up chop. You know, you watch like a Ryan Braun or whatever. You don't want to get him too high. You want to get it, you know, down on that guy. So he's reading everything. He's reading where you're leaning and how you're fouling balls off. And he's a master at the moment of baseball. Well, how in the world did he read your warm up swing? I read it pretty good because I didn't hit very good off of Johnny. He, he, like I said, he it was uncanny how many times I guessed wrong off of Johnny. It was like he was in. He knew what I was doing before I before I knew what I was doing. He was two steps ahead of me. Yadier Molina and Cueto. These two have had a lot of battles over the years. With one out of the bases empty, Molina rips that one to third, caught by Flores. Nice play. Out of here, not that happy. Two down, and now a message from Grayton Resort and Casino. So two down, base is empty. Yeah, your Molina is a 52nd at bat that Molina's taken against Cueto in his career. Matt Carpenter with Fred Bird trying to distract us behind home plate. Strike one, or probably more like trying to distract Johnny. Carpenter, who has had all kinds of success against the Giants over his career. We always talk about Arnado and Goldschmidt as sort of Giants killers over the years. Matt Carpenter, maybe not with the home run ball, but he's had a lot of big hits against the Giants. Seems like the good hitters, they, they, they hit teams, you know. These are pretty good hitters, and, uh, you know, a lot of good battles out there. But yeah, Matt Carpenter, I've always enjoyed just uh, his demeanor, his discipline, and consistent success in the big leagues. It's impressive. One, two, a little quick pick action. Quick pitch action and Cueto missed high. A lot of grooming in that beard, Flem. Very well kept. Kind of fits his personality to me. He foul tipped it. He's arguing that the ball was in the dirt, but Todd Titchener says no. Trump held on. That's strike three. So Cueto strikes out Carpenter. Slater at the top of the order coming up after this. NBC Sports Bay Area is brought to you by PG&E. Visit safetyactioncenter.pge.com for safety tips. Dave Fleming, Hunter Pence on this Sunday. Giants Cardinals in St. Louis. No score. Third inning. Top of the order for the second time now. Against Wade LeBlanc and Austin Slater jumps ahead in the count one to know. Austin who grounded out his first time up. Austin always told me you were one of the guys who helped him get acclimated to big league baseball sort of learn the ropes. Austin Stanford guy incredibly smart so fun to talk baseball so fun to talk mentality such a charming person to be around he's just fun to be around he's become the Giants player rep with the, the all the union issues and all that stuff I mean he really has become a leader on this Giants team and when he's swinging the bat well against lefties the Giants hit lefties I mean he is such an important player for them close but call the ball three and one. Without Posey, without Longoria in the middle of the lineup, the Giants have been a little more vulnerable against left handed pitching, and for obvious reasons. Good hitters count here for Slater. Three and two. Good pitch. We saw a good window of what he's capable of when he gets going, and Slater can get as hot as anyone, and we've seen how far he can hit the ball. I love the mustache homers he was hitting. <laughs> he did. He got rid of the mustache. That is strike three call right at the knees. Second strikeout for Wade LeBlanc. Well, time's running out to become a second half season ticket member. Astros coming to town. The Mets, the Padres. You get two series against the Dodgers. Secure the best seats. 
get postseason ticket rights for potential home games. The uh, window closes on Monday. That's tomorrow, July 19th. Visit sfgiants.com slash season. One out. Donovan Solano stands in. Big curveball for a strike. One and one. Solano got the first hit of the day for the Giants. Punched one into right field. Usually when Solano's using the middle of the field, right field, that's when you figure his swing is sort of locked in. He hits that one hard to left, but maybe not hard enough. O'Neill all the way back onto the edge of the warning track, two down. Well, Wade LeBlanc, it's been a while since he pitched against the Giants. That's <laughs> like like a decade almost. <laughs> 3,603 days last started a game against the Giants in September of 2011. Justin Verlander had had the longest gap, just a little bit longer, in fact, from 08 to 18. That's a long time. Yeah, it's a it's a little strange stat because he's pitched against the Giants just out of the bullpen. Yeah. I mean, he's kind of a split like hundred and some starts, hundred and some bullpen. Those guys are fascinating. They can do both. He's been around a long time. Came up with the Padres. Yastrzemski fouled that one back out of play. And I, he, he looks pretty sharp to me. He's hitting his spots. Yeah, it's his balls getting some late movement. He's actually he's been on the corners, but he's given some balls down the middle too, and it's just that little late break. That one right on the corner, strike two, swinging. And that's the fascinating thing with pitching is a lot of times you want the ball to move a whole bunch, or people think that that's better, but it's actually better to have very late movement. So it's going, 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 and then super at the end, just a little. Stremski right on the ground to first. Goldschmidt was kind of caught in between. Do I take it myself? Do I throw it to the pitcher? He took it himself, and the Giants are retired in order. Middle of the third. Nothing, nothing in St. Louis. All on NBC Sports Bay Area is brought to you by the Cheesesteak Shop. Nominate your hometown hero, and the Cheesesteak Shop will do them right. Last of the third and the bottom third of the order for the Cardinals seven eight nine hitters against Johnny Cueto a nothing nothing game Paul DeYoung has started to heat up swings at the first pitch from Cueto Yastrzemski watches it hit the net so it's just a strike 0 1 DeYoung's had some hits in this series his numbers are way below what you're used to seeing from him very solid player good defensive shortstop. Has some power. And he's trying to show it off here. In fact, he does. Gone to put the Cardinals ahead 1-0. Paul DeYoung with the solo home run, his 13th of the year. If you're gonna if you're gonna give up a home run he's trying to get a strike early gets a change up up a little bit and he drives it here at least you're giving up a solo uh, but yeah this is just a, a change up a little bit high and he was uh, he was ready for it as you can see 105 to eight rows deep in left field Harrison Bader just off the inside with the fastball well, too good of a hitter. He's hitting below 200 for most of the year. One and one to Harrison Bader. Yeah, Flynn, I always love Flannery. He had one of the best baseball quotes of all time. I'm not sure where he got it, but there's two types of baseball players those who are humble and those who are about to be. Consistency in this game can be tough, it can happen to some of the best, and DeYoung's great hitter. 
Yeah, it happens. You have a stretch where you're just not performing the way you're used to. It happens in this game. Yeah. The strength is how, how quick can you get out of it? That's the quest. DeYoung's definitely coming out of it. That's ball three. I want to tell a little story about Bader. Young guy, class, love watching his hustle. And he had, he wrote me a handwritten letter asking for an autograph and tell me why. I think he grew up in Houston, but you don't get handwritten letters too often. And I just wanted to give him a little shout out. What a classy guy. Huh? What a classy move. He does play the game. I, I could see why you would be a role model for him because he is kind of a go all out 100% effort at all times. I wouldn't say I'm any ro any role model or anything, but the yeah, play hard is is the motto to control what you can control. But I just wanted to shine a little light on him, and I, that's the only person to ever write me a hand written, written letter in all my time in the in the big leagues, as far as another player. I bet you he would use the term role model. I bet you that's exactly what he would say. Well, I want to grow some hair like him. That's a role <laughs> model for me. <laughs> Three, two. He fouls that one off. Very good defensive outfielder, Harrison Bader. Three, two. He's swinging at just about everything Johnny has to offer, and he's fighting off a lot of these pitches. That's a sneak attack with advantage right there. Winding up slow, winding up slow, and then just charge high heater. You see Bader have a little chuckle there. Yikes. 3 2, more normal, and he got Bader lunging at a changeup. Now they're really smiling at each other. See, this is the playfulness in baseball that you love to see and what Johnny brings out. He's playing with you. You got to be ready for anything at any time. I think Bader's enjoying it. This will be the 10th pitch of the at bat here. Okay, try that. And Bader skies one to center field. In the ballpark. One away. Ten pitches. <laughs> and with that, kind of the perfect at bat for Johnny to hit his milestone. Now exactly 2,000 innings pitched in his brilliant big league career. Congratulations. That's a remarkable achievement. What an accomplishment. A lot of hard work. He's a hard working. It's not a coincidence. He's been so good for so long. And I hope a lot more innings to go. Look who's at the top of that list. It's sort of unfathomable. Juan Marichal, 3,507 innings pitch. You consider how long Johnny's been around, how durable he's been, and then add on 1,500 more innings to what Cueto's done, the great Juan Marichal. Pretty cool. Wade LeBlanc takes a ball. Amazing. A lot of those old numbers are going to be tough to ever meet again. Yep. One and two. Well, Cueto, I don't know. It's a hot day. He's had a long layoff. The fastball velocity maybe he is just sort of holding something back for the second time through the lineup. Fastball's been kind of cruising around 89, 90. That went up to 91 and he got him swinging. Well, the bases have been empty. You know, he's kind of waiting for, you know, until you get in the thick of things. So, you know, got one change up, up, one solo homer, but, you know, he's just working the corners, working the movement, working the timing with no one on. So now two down, and Dylan Carlson will face Cueto for the second time. Carlson grounded out in his first at bat. Switch hitter. That change up was ripped to second, but right there, Donovan Solano for out number three. A milestone inning for Johnny Cueto. Does give up the solo homer, so through three, the Cardinals have the one nothing lead. 
fast nationwide 5G on the most reliable network. Save on your wireless bill with Xfinity Mobile. That's when you know you're a Giants broadcaster when you can start to do all the drop ins and the promos. The voice of Hunter Pence with us today Giants Cardinals in St. Louis. One nothing Cardinals on the Paul DeYoung home run. Wade LeBlanc who made an out in the third inning so taking just a little extra time here to get ready for the fourth Giants had the good opportunity in the first inning had the bases loaded did not score Darren Ruff who drew a walk in the midst of that rally will come up for the second time today. You and I are here in San Francisco and we're looking out on the field beautiful day in the city at Oracle Park and Brandon Belt was doing some workout stuff. Brandon's making some real progress. He was jogging, doing some throwing. Really good news. When Brandon first got hurt, there was some fear that he wasn't going to be back this year. He could be back in a matter of just a, a, a couple of weeks. That's big news for the Giants fans, for the Giants family. I mean, he's just an incredible player, and just keeping him healthy and keeping him out there definitely increases our chances of going where we want to go. Call the ball close pitch there Darren Ruff now with the count one and one Ruff's done a nice job Lamont Wade's done a really good job filling that Brandon belt hole. Giants have some weapons to use off the bench today. There's a strike. Cardinals have a particularly right handed bullpen so I think if the Giants can get Wade LeBlanc out of the game you'll start to see Gabe Kapler mix and match a little bit. One two. Two and two. Well right now this is the bat you want to see and it could be a good thing that no one's on base. Wade LeBlanc might give him a, a pitch to hit here and try not to walk the leadoff guy. Yadier Molina sets that target away. Ruff goes the opposite way but foul to stay alive. Tried to backdoor him with a cutter. Which has probably been the best pitch for LeBlanc these last few starts with the Cardinals. I think that's a great pitch for Ruff's bat path right now. It, it walks right into what he's doing. So that was, got away with that one. 2 2. Ruff drives one deep left field, and it is gone and all the way up into Big Mac land. Guess who called it? Darren Ruff ties the game 1 to 1. His 10th of the year. Kind of like that. I can't say that I called it but I knew that it was a good pitch for his bat path and I knew that no one on meant he might try to throw him some strikes. Man was that mash big rough dog. Yeah. You'd love to see it. Rough. Hit 107 miles an hour off the bat. Boom. Look at the barrel. So you see how the barrel's coming through, kind of the under, and the cutter goes right into the right-handed, like under swing. When we were talking with Johnny, looking at the, are they are they warming up high? Are they warming up low? And Ruff will destroy left-handed sliders with that bat path. Wait till I tell Darren Ruff that Hunter Pence called that home run. I didn't call the home <laughs> run. He, I just said it was a good matchup and a good pitch for him in that moment. 413 it only only looked and felt like 513 home run distance. That was a big fly. You kind of want to grunt when Ruff hits a homer because he's so big and he's so just you know his name's Darren Ruff and he just crushes balls. It's a great name for a power hitter. He's kind of the king of the exit velocity for the Giants right now. I mean Darren Ruff has just been Killing the ball, Gabe Kapler. That one came toward the Giants manager. <laughs> Look out, Gabe. You know, one of the cool stories about Ruff that I thought was really unique is they were doing all of this like, who's got the fastest bat? They put this thing and it reads your bat path and your swing. Watch Flores at bat here. But he had some of the fastest hands. I think he had actually the fastest hands, and you wouldn't have thought it because he's kind of a bigger power guy. You don't think of fast hands, but he has the fastest hands, I think, on the Giants, the quickest bat speed. And Donnie Ecker and, and this whole hitting staff, they're incredible. And they just like worked a little bit on the bat path in spring training in 2020. 
and he just started hitting homers and homers and homers and has continued to be successful in a very difficult role of not playing every day. Yeah Donnie Ecker loves Darren Ruff. He loves all his hitters but watching Donnie watch Darren take batting practice is fun because he does a lot of that grunting while Darren hits balls all over the ballpark. It's tough not to love Darren Ruff. He's just such a good old boy, just a good guy, and such a warm. Wow. Wilmer Flores, same exact spot that he was called out on in the first inning. Strike three this time. So Wilmer's 0 for 2 and, and probably a little hacked off. These are just perfect pitches. Sometimes you're that hitter that just gets the best stuff from the uh, from the opponent opposing pitcher and you know it just is not given Wilmer anything. It's been just dialed in right there. Hang with them. Meanwhile Darren Ruff still thinking about that home run that's tied the game. Brandon Crawford swings at the first pitch for the second straight at bat. Carpenter for out number two. So Brandon's 0 for 2, and he's only seen two pitches in this game. And Brandon likes that first pitch and maybe was looking for that pitch, just missed it. Yeah, it looked like he was right on time with it, and, and that pitch caught a lot of the plate. And you can't really be results oriented, like, oh, I shouldn't have swung at the first pitch, because if you get exactly what you're looking for, a pitch you can do damage, and you take your A swing. And you get out you want to yeah it definitely can mess you up and you want to be like oh I shouldn't have done that but the best you can do is get a pitch in the heart of the plate you're looking for and take it in a swing. I think Crawford would feel like he did that but out number two Talkman now the curveball for strike one Talkman had a good at bat his first time up worked the count full hit a ball hard but into the defense. Giants have tied the game. On the Darren Ruff home run. Talkman rips that one. It ricochets off Goldschmidt to Carpenter, who throws it to LeBlanc, who falls down just like they drew it up. <laughs> but the Giants get a run on the board. Darren Ruff, what'd you call it? The bat path, match the pitch. That's a pretty good looking swing for Darren Ruff. His 10th of the year ties the game, middle four in St. Louis. It's one to one. Bay Area is brought to you by Toyota. With 10 hybrids to choose from, there's one for everyone. Toyota, let's go places. By Kelly Moore Paints, the Painter's Paint Store. And by Mercury Insurance. Get a quote at mercuryinsurance.com. Across the Mississippi River from the state of Illinois into the state of Missouri with the Gateway Arch just a few blocks away. And the Giants and the Cardinals. And Paul Goldschmidt just got a base hit. Huh. <laughs> so Darren Ruff tied the game. And Paul Goldschmidt with the base hit to start the bottom of the fourth inning. So it's one to one. But now Goldschmidt is aboard with nobody out. And Nolan Arenado standing in. That's a 13 game hit streak for Paul Goldschmidt, who's really been swinging the bat well. All right, here's the hit. Low changeup, not a bad pitch. That's just a good hitter. Is this the first time Johnny's out of the stretch here? We got a base runner. Yeah, the only hit for the Cardinals have been the home run. Arenado popped out his first time up. Pulled it foul. Still getting used to Arnado not in a Rockies uniform. It's definitely different. It's a different ballpark to pitch to him in as well. That is for sure. Not that he didn't have some success against the Giants in San Francisco. He's had a lot of it over his career, but yeah, Bush Stadium is not Coors Field. The confidence he stepped in the box there was incredible. Yeah, so true. There were times in Denver where it was 
it just felt like where do you go to get this guy out. He's not just a power hitter. I mean he's a guy who has all kinds of coverage can hit lots of different kinds of pitches. The thing I've always been most impressed with him is RBI at bats. His at bats were completely different when there was an RBI situation and that's where you know you got you got to this find see be OK with walking him because he was so good for so long with runners in scoring position or runners on base. It's a different at bat. He's got a runner on base here Paul Goldschmidt who for a power hitter you got to pay attention to Goldschmidt a good base runner he'll he'll steal a bag every once in a while. Hasn't been caught this year. One two Arenado to right field. Stremski's there. One away. Well Giants are going to L.A. tomorrow then in very short order this next Giants homestand the Dodgers are coming to San Francisco it's a midweek three game series two series left to go here in San Francisco Giants and the Dodgers only six games left at Oracle Park head dead matchups are so important you get a couple of night games and a day game on Thursday the 29th SF Giants dot com slash tickets the place to go. I would expect that Oracle Park is going to be lit up for those games Tyler O'Neill takes ball one. Tyler O'Neill steps in the box and is screaming do you even lift. <laughs> He might be the if, if there's a, a more powerful weightlifter in big league baseball I don't know who it would be because I think he does lift to get that physique. <laughs> you think I do I do isn't his dad like a, a bodybuilding champion I think that's the word on the, that's the word I like he's definitely got some custom pants to show off that. The calf raises. Walker Bueller would be proud of the tight pants. Gavin Lux, we're going to see some tight pants here in LA. O'Neill hit a home run yesterday. He's just 26 years old. He took a huge cut there, two and one. A native of British Columbia Canada he's a Canadian. And he won a gold glove for his defense in left field last year so not just I mean sort of to your point sometimes we stereotype these big burly guys who look like they're trying to hit a home run on every swing. Tyler O'Neill can do more than that. Yeah he's having a, a good year as well at the plate and gold glove defense this is a ball player. Giants want to ask he did not go according to the first base umpire that's Tony Randazzo over there. I hear he's got a pretty good diet as well he's pretty strict with the eating program. Good change up. Yeah his dad Terry is a former Mr. Canada. The national bodybuilding champion in Canada in 1975. And the genes passed on. Cueto's got the real good pickoff throw. One of the best pickoff moves, I think, for any right hander in the game still. Yeah he's he's good he just he covers he does everything right he's good at every facet of the game he doesn't let you get a good running game he never lets you get comfortable he's always in control of everything happening goes over again so he's thinking there's a pretty good chance three two the Goldschmidt could be off and running here stay out of the double play it makes a lot of sense. Deal hit a ball to deep center field his last time up. He strikes out swinging here on the Cueto changeup. Two down. So big strikeout for Cueto. And now a word from Lazy Boy. 
Lazy Boy has so many designs and colors because they know style isn't always black and white. <gasps> or maybe it is. Lazy Boy, live life comfortably. Yadier Molina stands in for the Cardinals. Goldschmidt at first, two down, a 1-1 ball game. Couple of solo home runs in this one. Yadier swings at the first pitch on the ground to Crawford. Who will throw out Molina. That is out number three. So Cueto works around that leadoff single. We go to the fifth in a 1-1 ball game. Time for the Cadillac ultimate play. And why wouldn't we go back to 2012 in the NLCS? Game five, Giants Cardinals. Giants had to win this game. Barry Zito on the mound. And look who yeah, came up with the baseball. You remember that one, Hunter? Yeah, I remember that one. I was staring through the lights. You see the big eyes? It's because I'm blinded by the light, like trying to find a baseball through the, the headlights. So it was uh, happy to stay with that one and make the catch. And Zito, man, what a clutch performance right there from him. Okay, great to have Hunter with us today. Part of having Hunter around is is remembering all those great moments in the playoffs. That was Pete Cosma, must win. Zito against the Cardinals in St. Louis. The Cardinals were convinced they were finishing you guys off that night. Yeah, I mean, we had another one of those big, uh, you know, circles, and we grabbed all the elders, and everyone spoke, and Zito led the charge. Pablo said some amazing stuff, and, man, that was just a group that, that just had some soul power that was deeply loved to play together, and, and we went out there and played with love and played with joy, and, you know, like, you just got to let go, and, and, man, did Zito ever clutch up, and it was so fun to watch him lead that charge. So that would have been just a couple weeks, right, after your famous uh, in Cincinnati little uh, dugout uh, moment? Yeah, you know, but it was Boach, it was, you know, Affeld, it was Javi, it was Scudero, it was Wilson even adding to just the mindset that we were going to take. Because the first two games we came in, everyone trying to be the hero, trying to do too much. And it was like, look, we love to play together and let's play for each other. That was Cueto against you guys in San Francisco to start those playoffs. Real close, called a ball to Chadwick Trump. I think he pulled an oblique and they brought in Latos game one and he kind of carved us up a yeah. little bit. Yeah that, and that became a factor as that series went on. You guys found a way to win that game three. <laughs> Somehow some way. Maybe Joaquin Arias did he hit the ball that Scott Rowland couldn't quite make a play on. A lot of great moments to to sort through from that run Trump. Just to pop up. All right. Now I know you want to deflect credit and that's true. It was a group effort, but this was before game four. It's uh, a crazy madman. I, I was. I was I had lost my mind. I was tapped into doing anything to win and uh, lock, just trying to lock everyone together. Brothers, when you when you when you connect like that, it, it's deep. It's in, you feel it in your heart. You feel feel it in your soul and the bullpen man. They they held strong. Uh, the faith was strong and the energy just the momentum shifted after we snuck that one. Cueto takes a strike from Wade LeBlanc. Great memories. And Latos game five Buster Posey's grand slam one of my all time favorite moments. Then to St. Louis fell behind in that series it was it was the year of the comeback series for your Giants. 2012. Our Giants our Giants. Yeah. You know, but honestly, the bat, Jay Bruce for Sergio Romo. Oh, man. I remember. Oh, let's watch John here. Cueto to Arenado. There's Johnny. And Don't push it too hard, Johnny. Two down. Not the best matchup for Romo, I'm not going to lie. Bruce versus Romo, and it was just foul ball, foul ball, foul ball, foul ball. And I just remember being in the outfield, like, so thankful to be in that moment and just saying, man, both these teams deserve to win. I'm so in love with baseball. Good luck and let's have some fun. It was an amazing series and I remember that at bat too. I used to go down for the final inning because I was going to do the post game interviews and you had to be down there on the field right when the game ended. You had to do them right then. So I would leave the booth and go down to get ready for the interviews. And I would just walk up the tunnel because I didn't want to miss it. I, I still wanted to be able to watch what was going on. And I would kind of stand hide maybe behind Bochi sort of you know out of the view of everybody. 
And Boach was pacing during that at bat. Yeah, the only way I could stay calm was to just feel how much I loved baseball at the moment. Those were moments to savor. Slater flies out. LeBlanc retires the Giants in order. Middle five. Great memories. One to one. Giants Cardinals. Town over the next weekend. So when the Giants come back home, the Pirates will be here July 23rd, 24th, 25th. You can get view reserve or bleacher tickets for only 20 bucks to any of those weekend games. Secure your $20 tickets at sfgiants.com slash home. Use the coupon code home. Giants are coming home. After the All Star break and a tough road trip where they've played so well this year, Giants Pirates use that coupon code sfgiants.com slash tickets. Forecast summertime going to be beautiful. When you have a season like the Giants are in right now, those are big series. You got to, you got to, you got to make it happen. You got to take care of the teams that aren't necessarily in it. And you got to stay locked in. So it's a big series as far as I'm concerned with the Giants. Yeah, it is. And, you know, the Pirates played the Giants tough in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Giants ended up splitting that series. And the Pirates battled them. So you're right. Those are three big games. And then the Dodgers will be here. Giants are one game ahead of L.A. The Giants have the best record in the big leagues and only a one-game lead in their own division. Matt Carpenter takes a ball. It's one-to-one -one here in the bottom of the fifth. Giants will be in L.A. tomorrow night. Giants Dodgers. Carpenter ripped that one foul. You know, you and I were talking, Hunter, about Buster Posey has a chance to be back tomorrow. Pre-game will begin at 6.30 to get you ready for the ball game. Kevin Gosman, that's great news. Gabe Kapler told us before the game that Kevin is back. His wife Taylor's doing great. Our thoughts have been with them. And uh, Kevin's going to start the game tomorrow to begin that series in L.A. Yeah that's exciting first half he had and uh, Giants Dodgers getting your big big man out there it's uh, great news Cueto got the call on the outside Carpenter could not believe it strikeout number five for Cueto. Yeah him and him and Trump are really really in sync right now and many just receives that so good that's that's just a perfect located pitch with two strikes and you know the too close to take it's uh, it's not really a thing anymore. It isn't. I mean, hitters are much more willing to take strike three, wait for a pitch they can hit over the fence, and if they can't do damage, they're willing to take it. It is a different mentality. Yeah, I think it's a strong mentality. I do think the shift is better. I swung at too many bad ones personally. DeYoung on the ground to short. Crawford throws him out. So if you had it to do all over again, you might change that approach a little bit. I'm sure you got tired of watching me swing <laughs> sliders in the dirt. And I all never that. got tired uh, of watching you swing ever. No, but I, I do. I do believe in the power of discipline, the power of patience, and that's why I love watching this Giants lineup. You did change a little bit late in your career. I mean, you had that great year, 2019, and part of that to me was you. You were a different style hitter. Mm -hmm. Not that you didn't have great years sort of your your I definitely wish when style. I was healthy I knew what I knew in 2019 yeah Bader the note writer takes strike one I'm never going to look at Harrison Bader the same after you told me that he's a classy fella that's a cool thing to do that's old school old school handwritten note I still do that it's so good it's so classy it's it's we got to keep it alive we got a few more innings to go. I got to see how you do, but maybe if you finish this game strong, maybe I'll send you a little thank you note for being with us today. That'd be incredible. I need to send you one. We'll see. My handwriting, we'll see. my handwriting is kind of embarrassing, but I'm still going to go for it. <laughs> why does that? Why does that not shock me? Oh boy, there's the shimmy. All that. He's having fun with Harrison Bader. I mean, these two guys are enjoying one another. They're having some battles. That's for sure. Cueto likes this guy. Or really doesn't like him. One or the other. I think it's because they're having a hair off. It's a hair battle and a pitching hitter battle. We got, all, we got so many battles. Cueto, when Cueto does the full shebang, he doesn't want that pitch to be a ball. 
So he took a minute there. Does he quick pitch him here? Let's see. No. Ball three. You do have the pitcher LeBlanc on deck. So Cueto 3 1 doesn't have to just throw him something right down the middle. Close. Ball four. That's the first walk that Cueto's given up today. Probably a smart time to, you know, work the corners a little bit. Bader's was put up a 10 pitch at bat. He's seen a lot of his stuff, and uh, Johnny has good feel. Good point. Bader's first at bat went 10 pitches, and he was fighting off some real good Cueto pitches. And Bader's got the power to beat you if you make a mistake. So now LeBlanc swings at the first one. One thing from the Cardinals' perspective, it turns the lineup over for the next inning, even if Cueto gets through the pitcher here. Another thing to think about, though, is if he gets Bader out there, they might pinch it for the pitcher in the next inning. So Act. get your get your pitcher out, you know, and, and take your chances right here with LeBlanc. Bader's a guy who will run with the pitcher up. Maybe not as likely to go. He's got five steals on the year Harrison Bader. He hadn't played a lot. He's been hurt a lot this year. That was close. So the two had a little battle when Bader was in the batter's box. Now they're going to have a battle with Bader over at first base. I think Johnny was waiting for word from the Giants dugout. Giants might have wanted to take a look at that one. Yeah, Ruff's reaction was give it a peek. LeBlanc to Solano. Bader went into second with the slide. The throw went to first, and Johnny Cueto gets through the fifth. Solano, Yastrzemski, and the big man coming up. It's one to one. For our Statcast 3D powered by Google Cloud, let's compare Bush Stadium to Oracle Park. The dimensions, actually, they're pretty comparable. Oracle Park actually is a little shorter in left field. Now the weather's different. We know that. A little bit deeper obviously in right center field but Bush Stadium Hunter is a pretty good place to pitch seems like a very fair ballpark with the dimensions pitchers and hitters look at that triples alley that thing is massive but I it think is. the ball kind of flies there when it's warm the wind the, the flags look like they're blowing in a little bit but I found Bush Stadium to be kind of a hitters park hmm. a lot of times okay I know when it first opened this new Bush Stadium the, the very first game it was almost like Oracle Park uh, where Way back in the day, the Dodgers were here. Kevin Elster hit three home runs in the first game in this ballpark's history, and everybody thought, oh my God, they built a band box. Obviously, it did not turn out that way. Bush Stadium, same idea. First time the new Bush, first game that was played here, the home runs were flying all over the place. Been a little more balanced than that. Donovan Solano had a good rip at the first pitch here in the sixth inning. Giants won, Cardinals won, final game of this series. Solano one for two in the game. Right there, strike two. Yeah, I always found Bush Stadium to be as like just pure baseball, just as balanced as you can get for baseball. It's a good atmosphere. If you've never been as a as a baseball fan, it's one of those just classic ballpark atmospheres. Cardinals fans have been out in pretty big numbers this weekend. Lots of Giants fans. You can see the orange and black sprinkled around with all the red. One, two, way outside. Pitch number 78. Cardinals are getting the bullpen going. That's Ryan Helsley. Giants had good at bats against him yesterday. Hard throwing right hander big contrast with Wade LeBlanc in terms of styles and maybe getting ready for Darren Ruff who's due up third in this inning. We'll see how Mike Schilt the Cardinals manager wants to play it. It's a good lead off at bat right here working a full count. 
Payoff pitch, baby. Especially after falling behind 0 2. 3 2. Solano rips it into left field base hit. So very good at bat for Donovan Solano. He's aboard to start the sixth. Donnie Barrels finds the barrel. Yep, just battles his way back. Just incredible. Dude, he's just a gamer and works the count all the way and gets his pitch and puts a barrel on it, finds a hole. Quick word with Antoine Richardson, Giants first base coach. Go ahead, run aboard with the big hitters coming up. Yastrzemski and Ruff. Yes. Had the single, kind of the bloop single in the first inning, has also grounded out. Takes the curve for a ball. It's a great take right there. Strike the ball. He's seen it well. This is the third time through the lineup as well. So he should have a pretty good feel for Wade LeBlanc. Arenado in on the grass at third. Stremski, I mean, he's a good bunner. He'll do it every once in a while. He rips that one into the gap in right center field. Carlson will cut it off on a bounce. Solano's digging for third. He'll make it there without a throw. Ended up being a good play by Dylan Carlson, but still the Giants are set up. First and third, nobody out. And the manager's coming out. Johnny's calculated walk. You're exactly right. That was a good call. That, that, that timing of that was different than in a different part of the game. So LeBlanc's spot was clear. They won't use a pinch hitter. And now the Giants knock the left hander out. Helsley coming in. Giants looking to take the lead in St. Louis when it's time for a change. Think speedy oil change and auto service. Your trusted oil change, tune up and repair experts. Podcast presented by Wendy's covering all the big stories around the Giants hosted by Giants insider Alex Pavlovich and Cole Kuyper featuring our pal Dwayne Kuyper available wherever you get your podcast Giants talk podcast presented by Wendy's all right Dave Fleming Hunter Pence top six in St. Louis Giants have it set up here they've knocked Wade LeBlanc the starter out of the game one to one first and third nobody out and I can't imagine this was in it an easy decision for Gabe Kapler Ryan Helsley takes over for the 30 41st time this year Giants put pressure on him and scored a run against him in yesterday's ball game hard throwing right hander a lot of strikeouts a lot of walks for Helsley but Darren Ruff is out Lamont Wade Junior pinch hitting for Ruff here with nobody out in the six and he takes high ball one this is a pivotal at that right here we're we're in the heart of the game. Got a good good inning going here with Solano and Yastrzemski. Way to hit a big three run homer on Friday night. He's done such a good job for the Giants. Trying to get the Giants the lead here. First and third nobody out. And he pops it up foul behind home plate. Kind of got a hanging slider at a pretty good cut at it. It's one and one. I know the Giants love the platoon advantage and the bench has been such a big part of the Giants success this year and Lamont Wade's been a part of that. Darren Ruff's got a real good swing going. I can't imagine that was just a no brainer decision for Gabe Kapler. I bet he had to think about that one. Yeah they have a system and I'm sure they've looked at the, the splits and they, ha they have everything kind of weighed out and they have a great system underneath the batting tunnel getting these guys ready. That was a good hack at a good pitch. Look he's 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 locked in he's on time and that's the thing I noticed that got better as as time went on in my big leagues is the equipment and, and having good ways to get you into the game ready for game speed. Giants definitely do that. Giants pinch hitters have been about as good as any group in the major leagues. Wade's ahead in the count two and one. Helsley and a 97 mile an hour fastball fouled back it's two and two. Those dungeon dwellers are grinding and they bring energy and they're excited to be down in the cage. You see some of this stuff if you're going to be doing some more Giants broadcasts with me I'm going to have to get up to speed on some of my little cultural references here. Man you're in the dungeon it's just a cave and you're just hitting and hitting and there's so many of them and they got to bring it for each person in their program. They work so hard and get no credit. Two two. Wade strikes out swinging 99 mile an hour fastball got him so that's a big first out. 
one away. Helsley, that's why they bring him in. He's just got the strikeout stuff. That's an absolute bullet. Top of the zone, a little bit running off. And he won that battle. Good pitch. So now Wilmer Flores. Giants don't have quite as much versatility in this spot. So Wilmer will stay in. Wilmer hits right handers well. First and third, one out. Fastball. Nine home runs for Flores. He was maybe the hottest Giants hitter other than Brandon Crawford before the All Star break. He's done a terrific job playing just about every day with Evan Longoria out. In a big spot here. It's a fly ball. Not deep. Bader's got a big arm. You got Solano at third. Bader will make the catch. His throw was offline, but Solano, you can't blame Donovan Solano. That was not very deep. Had to hold two down. Yeah, this is a, you, you can't go on that even though he, he pulled the pulled that throw in from center field, but here he comes. He's so he's so close. This is a this is a low leverage. You got to trust the next batter. Um, execution though, we've had a couple of bats here with runners on third less than two outs and that's when you want to really get those guys in and hone in. But you know, Helsley's come in throwing some BBs at these guys. It's not it's not easy. That's for sure. It's one of the hardest things as as a player uh, to get those guys in. So now it's going to take a hit or a Cardinals mistake and you got Brandon Crawford Giants RBI leader up Molina asked for time Crawford against LeBlanc 0 for 2 now facing a much different pitcher in Helsley for setting the vibe we used to always love to say because it's very true about Brandon Crawford Crawford loves RBIs Fleming. We he would does. just stretch it out every time he was in these big situations, and he gets it done. Good take there on a changeup. He has always had a feel for the big moment since the time, since his very first game, hit a grand slam in his first game as a big leaguer. He's had a lot of great years, but having arguably his very best year. Another change up, 2 0. I have so many things to say, but this moment is so big about Crawford, so maybe another time I'll get to talk about some of the impressive things with Brandon Crawford, but he's completely changed his swing, and he was one of the most unlucky hitters for a long time, and it was just because of the swing path. He was so talented and so good, and he would hit it perfectly, and it would just be an out. And now those, when he's squaring it up, it's damage. Now Molina comes out of his crouch. Yadier maybe wants a minute to try to grind this one out a little bit. You want to be smart here with Crawford up and one of the you know MVP candidates right here up to plate. Yeah. And you got Talkman who's you know he's hit to the ball hard twice today, so some it's decision time. Yeah, and Yadier was he was back there and decided we need to talk about this face to face. So it's a next diva meeting on the mound when you need business communications for the office, the home office, and everywhere in between. Choose Next, Tiva. So many similarities to me when I watch Molina, the way he works with the Cardinals pitchers to the way that Buster does with the Giants. A lot of times you don't need a pitching coach. Two of the best in the business at managing the game from, you know, the pilot seat, the catcher. And uh, Molina, in so many big moments throughout my career, would know when I was locked in and call this timeout. And it just would get me all ruffled my feathers and I just you know he was just so smart at knowing when the hitter was locked and, and just reading the rhythm of the game. The catcher is the quarterback the pilot. All right meeting over two and oh to Brandon Crawford first and third two down. Three and oh sticking with that change up. 
It looks like they don't want to challenge Craw. They want to take their their chance. But we'll know a lot more with this pitch coming up. But 2-0 change up. Looks like their their meeting was. We're gonna we're not gonna we're gonna yeah. see if he can chase something, but we're not gonna challenge Craw. And now they're not even gonna bother. Three and oh, they issue the intentional <laughs> walk. Now the one thing about this Hunter is Mike Talkman one of his very best skills as a big leaguer is controlling the strike zone as a hitter and you got a guy who's prone to the walk nowhere to put him a walk would put the Giants ahead. I think the Giants are happy to have Mike Talkman as the guy up in this spot. It's a lefty righty matchup it's a patient hitter with the bases loaded pick your poison you know that's uh, that's what good teams make you do. And Talkman, you're right. 0 for 2 has grounded out twice, but both times hit the ball hard today. Base is loaded, two down. Tie game, sixth inning. Talkman goes after that first pitch fastball right down the middle. Strike one on the foul ball. Giants had first and third nobody out Cardinals trying to get out of the jam Solano Yastrzemski and now Crawford out there for the Giants. Talkman's hit a grand slam this year. Just inside at ninety nine. You see how good Yachty catches that it's such a ball and he makes it look so good. He's a wizard. Cardinals fans bought it what Yachty was selling one and one that one called a strike on the outside perfect pitch one and two sticking with the fastball. And that's what most teams have done against Talkman in this stretch where the offensive numbers have gone down for Mike Talkman a lot of fastballs. I think the Giants feel like he's starting to come out of it though. This would be a big spot for Talkman. One and two. Fastball 100 miles an hour and he struck him out swinging. Molina held on to the foul tip so the Giants had first and third nobody out. Cardinals keep the game tied one to one. Take best road record in the big league since May 16th. I mean, the Giants have one of the best road records overall, but particularly these last couple months, they have been the very best road team in baseball Giants, Dodgers, Astros, Brewers. I mean, no coincidence, some of the best teams overall, but the Giants played well away from home, trying to win in St. Louis today, take the game and the series from the Cardinals. But the game's still tied after the Giants let a good opportunity go by. Bottom of the six, it's one to one. And a new pitcher when it's time for a change. Think speedy oil change and auto service. Your trusted oil change tune up and repair experts against the top of the lineup. It's the former Cardinal, the right hander Dominic Leone. 20th appearance for Leone, and one of his toughest outings of the year came two nights ago against his old team. Now, where was that one? Ball one. Didn't get the call right there, but made a good pitch. Lamont Wade stays in to play first base. Giants used Wade as a pinch hitter in a big spot. And Ryan Helsley, give him credit, got the strikeout and got through it. Carlson, who has grounded out and lined out. You got Goldschmidt and Arenado lined up here. So the big hitters for Dominic Leone in the sixth inning trying to keep the game tied. There's the slider kind of squibbed out to the left side. Wilmer was all alone over there. And he made the play. The shimmy hunter today was working for Cueto. That's a that's a triple stamp, the double stampy. Um, <laughs> going, going, going deep. The wiggle wobble, the bubble bobble, and uh, there's a baseball flying out soon. Never ever boring, Johnny Cueto. Five innings and only the one run, only a couple of hits. I mean, Johnny Cueto pitched very well today. That one not close from Leon. 
Just the Paul DeYoung home run. That's it. But the Giants into the bullpen. Bullpen's very fresh coming out of the All Star break. Right there on the corner, one and one. That's a good sign. Leon, the fastball command two nights ago just was not there. And whether it was some extra adrenaline pitching against his old team, he was throwing hard, but he was not commanding that pitch. That was a perfect fastball there. Yeah, it could be any number of things. First game back from the All Star break. Uh, but man, his command looking good here today, this first batter, and now Paul. Through the cutter there. He's got the hard cutter plus the slider. Goldschmidt's been red hot lately, one for two today. Now Trump asked for time. Three and one. Well, look out. Goldschmidt's been known as a second half kind of guy, too. So this is a big at bat right here. Big pitch down 3 1. Fastball. 3 and 2. Right now, he's not missing mistakes, Paul Goldschmidt. If you make a mistake to him, he's hitting it hard somewhere. Leon's feeling pretty locked in, so something's got to give. Let's get him, Leone. 3 2. Through the slider, and he missed it. Ball four. Well, I don't mind that against Goldschmidt, the way he's swinging the bat. Try to make a perfect pitch. If you miss, you miss. Yeah, that was a good take by Goldschmidt. Like I said, uh, the, the power of the take is good, and, and that's a strike to ball. A lot of confidence to throw the 3 2 breaking ball there. Problem, of course, now you wrestle with Nolan Arenado. Arenado went 0 for 2 against Cueto. Perfect cutter right on the outside. It's a pretty good pitch. It's the beauty of baseball. You're competing against the best. You want to get out there and you want to earn it. We got Goldschmidt and Arenado. It's good baseball. Good game of hardball we're watching today, Flim. This is where against the Cardinals, you better have some right-handed relievers late in the game. And the Giants have a, a bullpen which often has featured a lot of lefties this year. Dominic Leone has really done an excellent job since coming up to the big leagues. But with Arnauto, with Goldschmidt, with O'Neill, with Molina, you got to have some righties you trust in the pen. Arnauto to center field. Slater coming in, and he'll make the call. A little moment where I wasn't sure who was going to take that one. Two down. We had a 1 1 ball game with a 1 1 count on pitch number 11. There's some mojo happening on that one. Snake eyes. That's a good point. They do have a lot of a right handed heavy lineup. And uh, you want to you want to have balance. But right handed pitchers are great against this Cardinals team. Yeah the Giants often are very equipped to to go up against a team that's got a lot of left handed thunder because closer Jake McGee. You got Jose Alvarez who's been pitching so well. Harleen Garcia Giants have a lot of weapons from the left side. And Dominic Leone has really filled a role in this bullpen. Tyler Rogers done a great job. But Leon has steadily climbed up the ladder in that pen where he's he's kind of the top guy outside of those back end two up the middle O'Neill past the defense for a two out single. So Goldschmidt the go ahead run is now in scoring position Tyler O'Neill with his first hit of the day to bring up Yadier Molina. There's another tough right hander in a spot like this. Yeah, he, he challenges him here, gets the ground ball, and, and it's into the shift. He just gets it right through, and uh, 
You know, you, sometimes you win the battle, but they, they still get the knock. Uh, good swing right there. But the real danger here is now you got Goldschmidt and, uh, at second, and you got Molina hitting. And Goldschmidt's as good as you get. To, so you, you, your focus has got to be able to handle a lot of things to make sure they're not getting the signals here or picking up a grip. So Goldschmidt's as good as it gets. So when he's on second, it's a big deal. You were talking about Arenado, his knack for these kind of at-bats. Yadier Molina over the years has been so tough in a spot where a base hit can mean a run. First pitch, Molina against the slider, drops down to his knee. Looked like he was trying to ambush, change the game real quick, and... Uh, was zigging when he should have been zagging. It's a worthy, it's a worthy gamble. Yeah, it's just strike one. Molina definitely not afraid to hit with two strikes. I mean, he will expand. He is not a guy who's going to take a ton of walks in spots like this. Two on, two out. In the dirt, good block by Trump. So relaxed, very smooth. I like the the new form, the leg out, and he seems to be real comfortable with it. Goldschmidt's got good speed, the lead runner. Cutter this time, ball two. Well, yeah, here Molina caught Dominic Leon for two full seasons in St. Louis. He knows him. To center field, but very shallow. Crawford will take charge and make the catch. If Crawford wants it, let him take it. Dominic Leone, nicely done, works through the jam. On to the seventh we go, still tied at one. For a game summary brought to you by Toyota. Really good game in St. Louis on this Sunday afternoon. Giants Cardinals who've had so many battles over the years. One to one. Five hits for the Giants. Three for the Cardinals. Cueto five innings. Gave up the home run to Paul DeYoung. Darren Ruff home run. His tenth of the year. The only Giants run. Wade LeBlanc was pretty solid. Left-handed starter for the Cardinals. Ryan Helsley got the Cardinals out of a big jam in the sixth. Dominic Leone pitched through some traffic in the sixth inning himself. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. You're trusted. Oil change, tune-up and repair experts. Henesis, Cabrera, and uh, Hunter Pence. He can be a little spooky from the left side. He has got great stuff. Does not always know where the ball is going. 48 strikeouts, 24 walks in 41 and two-thirds. Yeah, it can be a weapon, but you know it can also it can it can come back to bite you. So that's a lot, quite a bit of base on balls. He can strike you out, he can walk you, and it's it's going to be fun to watch every time he takes them out. It's definitely a journey. Elsley did great work. Giants had a an excellent opportunity to take the lead in the top of the sixth inning. Couldn't do it. Had first and third, nobody out. So now Cabrera starts clean in the seventh. Trump, the pitcher's spot, and then the top of the lineup. Ball one to Chadwick Trump, who's got the power to change the score with one swing. He's looking comfortable in the in the box. He's taking good swings. Uh, another decent matchup here. You know, a little bit more fastball. He's been known to change some games. He's not afraid. High with that very firm. I mean, he throws his changeup about 90 miles an hour. It's two and zero. Oh. I think that was a changeup. Yeah, it had to be. Definitely not where he wanted it, I don't think. 2 0. 3 0.
Tyro Estrada on deck with Dominic Leone's spot due up. Estrada's had a lot of good at bats for the Giants since coming up to the big leagues. 3 0. Oh. I would think that would have been a take situation for Chadwick Trump. Tie game, seventh inning. Most likely a take situation right there. That's not a good pitch to swing at either. Top of the zone. 3 1. Trump had a big cut. That was a pretty good pitch to swing at. 3 and 2. Power of 98 miles an hour. Yeah, the trick to it is you want to get big, but you need to get you need to be short and quick, short and quick, smooth and soft here when they're throwing the power. Three two is a little jam shot, first base side, Goldschmidt over a good effort, but he can't catch it. Just a foul ball. Trump definitely toned it down a little bit. Short and quick would, would be what I'd be screaming from the dugout right now. It's loose. It's a very gentle thing that the ball goes a long way. It's super. Baseball's a weird sport. Not always a max effort. I'm going to try harder, swing harder sport. Football, just go run the guy over. Three and two. Trump's having a good battle here. Got him swinging. So out number one as Estrada comes up. A brief message from Tahoe Blue Vodka. Maybe you're up at Tahoe. Maybe you're out on the coast side. Wherever you are enjoying this summertime weekend. Glad you're with us. Giants baseball. Dave Fleming, Hunter Pence. Giants in St. Louis. Tyro Estrada, the pinch hitter against Henesis Cabrera tie game and a big breaking curveball taken for ball one. Estrada to chase that changeup. You're going to be on the uh, pregame the next couple nights, huh? Pre and post game. Okay. For the Dodgers series. You and Greg Papo will be getting us ready for Giants Dodgers. That'd be fun. I'm ready to get weird. <laughs> Papa's a fun guy. He'll be all fresh and rested. That one right on the inside. Strike two to Estrada. Kevin Gosman will make his return to the Giants tomorrow. Tony Gonsolin's going to start for L.A. St. Mary's Gale product. Gonsolin has been pitching well. Really loves cats. One, two. <laughs> Down he does. Yeah, it's 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 really interesting. It's cool to hear him talk about it. But he's like hyper love of cats. Very. Very interesting. So that's the kind of info you're going to get from Hunter on the pregame and postgame the next couple nights. I did not know that. Two and two to Tyro Estrada. Slater due up next. And another 98 mile an hour fastball for strike three swinging. Two down. I mean, this is a rubber band slingshot, sick, nasty, right? Like, uh, hang with them. Sometimes they just do that to you. That is good stuff. It's funny because the Cardinals bullpen really has not been great this year. All the walks, and a lot of erratic performances, but the stuff between Reyes, Gallegos, Cabrera, Helsley, I mean, it's big time power stuff. Ball one to Slater. Yeah, Cabrera's got. A pretty good season going for him right now and you can see why this is it's 98 but it's like 98 he's releasing it late and it's just getting catapulted. John Brebbia the former Cardinal warming up in the Giants bullpen. We'll see him in the bottom of the seventh that's ball two to Slater. 
I have to say I like I, I do like this matchup with Slater if he comes inside. And I know Slater has the oppo pop but I just think that that runs into his swing a little bit better if he catches it out front. Slater also a guy who will work in at bat a patient at bat Giants would take a walk here Slater's got excellent speed. Two and oh. Very high three and oh. So right here with two strikes do you want him swinging three oh or do you want him taking. I think I'd give him the green light hey, I want with two outs and no one on I want to I would think so too. Let's later let it fly catch it out front cheat a little bit. Wow. Slater tossed the bat that did not look like a strike. Yeah he got the call right there sometimes they get the call you know and Yachty catches them good. Some umpires strike zone gets a little bigger 3 0. Maybe that's the case for Todd Titchener. We don't know if that was a good or bad thing for Slater. He could another pitch could be good for him. Yeah. That one is called the ball. So there's the walk. Two out base runner for the Giants. Left hander on the mound. Yadier Molina behind the plate. I'm not sure it's a base stealing situation, but it's the kind of hitter where getting into scoring position would be very valuable if Slater thought he could get a jump. Yeah Solano is going to be staying inside he's going to be fighting what we call the good fight he always does he's just a pro pro at bats and uh, it's it, this is a, this is going to be a fun battle right here these two matching up. Slater's got eight steals leads the Giants very good base runner and base stealer. Solano has two hits today two for three big curve way outside and Molina wants to talk. Mike Yastrzemski is due up next. Sometimes I think these are strategy meetings. Sometimes maybe Molina just wants his young pitcher to take a breather, a little reset moment. Now we'll get back to baseball. It's a lot of balls and a lot of not not even close to a spot so try to lock him back in. And you got a dangerous bat in the box with Donnie barrels. Solano's starting to get hot it looks like. He's had a nice series. It's three straight multi hit games against the Cardinals here in St. Louis. Change up at 90 miles an hour when you're geared up for 98 99. Yeah, he fooled him there for sure. He fooled all of us coming out of the meeting with a change up. Maybe that's what gets him back into throwing strikes. You never know. Solano rips that one to left field. Tyler O'Neill is going to get there. He got a great jump and he makes a catch. So that might have saved the tie for the Cardinals. Seventh inning stretch time. It's still one to one. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Francisco Giants Baseball Club, LLC. Well a look from the T-Mobile coverage cam at Bush Stadium it's the backstop robo right behind home plate. The robotic camera gives us all these great shots of playing field. Sort of what it looks like from the box seats behind home plate the gateway arch up out in the distance just a few blocks away out beyond right center field. Giants and the Cardinals for the last time in 2021. 
Giants trying to win the series and split the season series against the Cardinals. So the new pitcher, when it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your trusted oil change tune up and repair experts. Another former Cardinal in for the Giants, John Brebbia, who was an extremely popular member of the Cardinals the last few years. Coming back from Tommy John surgery, his 10th appearance of this year against Carpenter. And then DeYoung and Bader. Ball one from Brebbia to Carpenter. Talk about a taste of your own medicine. We're just throwing the ex Cardinals at him. Yeah, who else we got down there? Well, these last two. That ball is ripped to right field. Carpenter down the line, and it's going to one hop over the wall. That's an automatic double for Matt Carpenter to start the seventh, the go ahead run in scoring position with nobody out. He's going to immediately come out of the game for a pinch runner. Yeah, it gets gets a little bit of the heart of the plate right here. Carpenter gets the head out. Doesn't look like he it, he got much barrel. That must have got in on him, but he hit it right down the line. We're going to bounce over. Ground rule double. So Matt Carpenter does it again against the Giants. He had maybe the big hit of the series when the Cardinals were in San Francisco. Against Kevin Gosman now DeYoung who is one for two with a home run in this game against his old teammate Rondone now the runner at second and a slider is hit to right not deep we'll see his strength he's going to circle around it Rondone is going to tag he has his throw is a little offline Cardinals get the go ahead run to third with only one out. So this is the first part of execution. That's a that's a productive out. Obviously, get the guy over, and you can see he gave up the at bat. He was he, this is exactly what he was trying to do. This is a team at bat. Oh, here comes the Yaz throw right here. But he's he's so deep. You, there's not much of a chance as long as he tagged. He's he's got that. That's a that he just got the job done. So, but this is the final part of the execution. Is third to home. Well, we've seen it has not been easy for the Giants in this game. Giants will bring the infield in, trying to keep this game tied. Harrison Bader up for the third time. Against Brebbia. Fastball, strike one. The young scribe. Yeah, that's a little more eloquent than what did I call him, the letter writer? <laughs> Note taker? <laughs> no, no, I don't remember. That's a good one. 0 oh, 1 to Bader. Good ball player, no matter what. Strikeout kind of spot for Brebbia. Slider, foul back out of play. Now he's ahead of him 0 2. It's a little hang time on a few of these Brebbia sliders. Ahead 0 2. See if he can bury one. Get Bader to chase. That's a Salvador Dali paint job right there. Just painting the corner. 0 2. I think that one Trump liked. See if he would chase. Doan the pinch runner now at third infield in for the Giants another slider and a check swing roller knocked down by Wade Brebbia won't get the out at first and Rondon is in to score the go ahead run and he didn't even mean to swing and the Cardinals go ahead two to one speed can do dangerous things and you just you fight 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 that's a great pitch by Brebbia and he just he doesn't get rewarded here Bader just fights and athletics his way to possibly an RBI knock right here to change the game hustle was a good pitch. 
Cardinals were going to go ahead anyway. I mean, that run was going to score once Wade could only knock it down. Now Tommy Edmond will hit for the pitcher spot. Cardinals have gone ahead two to one. And they did what the Giants couldn't do get that runner home from third, still with only one out. In a spot where we might see Bader try to steal second. Good job on both ends. You said it. DeYoung got the runner over, and then Bader found a way to get him home. Yep. It's, uh, it's how you write it up as an offense lead off double, get him over, get him over, get him in. You like to add an extra get him over just for fun. <laughs> I noticed that. Snuck an extra one in. I think it's Javi, Javi Lopez used to always say, get him over, get him over, get him over, get him in. <laughs> Brebbia. Time was granted. Yeah. Well, the Giants still have six outs of life on offense, so this game far from over, but we saw Gallegos and Reyes how tough they are. So Brebbia's job here is to keep the Giants as close as possible because it's not easy against the back two arms in the Cardinals bullpen. Yeah damage control here obviously I mean the, the Giants pitching has been outstanding this game still got a little ways to go but take, take advantage of the opportunities when they present themselves and the last six outs are the big outs. Swings through the fastball. Rare day off today for Tommy Edmond. Cardinals using him off the bench. Another good fastball, two and two. Something else we didn't mention was Solano hit that ball 103.6, and we talked about O'Neill being a gold glover. We saw it in, in action right there. He's got the big muscles, but they're flexible, and he's got some speed. Yeah, top of this seventh inning, Slater drew the walk. Slater was off and running, and Solano did what you want to do. I mean, he crushed one, a liner to left center field off the bat. I thought for sure it was a hit. And you're right, Tyler O'Neill got a great jump. And he kind of made it look easy. It was not easy. It's a really good play. He doesn't catch that. The Giants easily score the one, and who knows? Still going. Still two and two to Tommy Edmond. And that's really what we've seen. The Cardinals. I mean, it hasn't been a team, I guess, other than the Dodgers that has played the Giants this tough this year, and the Cardinals are doing it with making no mistakes, making the Giants earn everything, generally keeping the Giants in the ballpark, the top home run hitting team in baseball. Another 2 2 slider. Out to left center. Slater on the move. Austin Slater for out number two. Bader tagging and he'll take second. So Harrison Bader, that was good base running by him. He's in scoring position now with two down. That's as heads up as you get. And it's one of the things I learned as they started talking about increasing your war and base running metrics. And the tag at first is one of the greatest ways to increase your base running metrics and sneak in a little advantage for your team to get some wins. It's a big big base right there. It is. You get the leadoff hitter coming up. That's an extra run for the Cardinals. Slater's momentum was sort of taking him away from the second base bag. Bader uses his speed. 
So here's Carlson. Slider for strike one. Leadoff double by Matt Carpenter set it up. Cardinals have gone ahead. Rebbe is going to step off. Bader dancing around out there. That slider in pulled it foul one and two. Pretty interesting. Both of those Trumpy set up away. The way inside. I don't know if he meant to do that or not, but watching just Bader with the steps out there. These are things I do in the outfit. I'm always watching what's he doing when we're where we're setting up. It's the old habits. And it could be. Yeah, you never know. Trying to use some deception. So Bader. Well, Trumpy could be setting up outside for an inside pitch. Yeah. They, I know he does that sometimes. And that's really good right there. How he how he showed it late. He's really advanced in in the last two years. You know, since last year. Well, teams have never been more paranoid, and for good reason, about trying to disguise everything with a runner at second base. It's part of the fun for me. Part of the fun of baseball. Two two. Got him swinging with the slider. So Carlson goes down, but the Cardinals execute after the leadoff double and have taken the lead. Yastrzemski, Wade Flores coming up. It's two one Cardinals. Oh hey, you look like someone who should stick around for Summer Sunday post game, Cole. Tell them why they should stick around. We're going to make some awesome, bold predictions for what's going on in the second half of the season. And if that's not enough, Anthony, why else should they stick around? And fair or foul, the Giants are afraid of the Dodgers coming up this week in the four-game series. Throwing out some heat. That's what you're going to expect on Summer Sunday coming up after the Giants and Cardinals. Don't change the channel. Okay, fine, we won't. Two to one Cardinals, eighth inning from St. Louis. So stay tuned after the game for that. Giants have some work to do. This has been a very well played game. Giants have had two really good scoring chances outside of the rough home run and haven't cashed in. Now they have their hands full. Giovanni Gallegos, one of the best setup pitchers really in baseball, 40th appearance of the year, a 2.66 ERA, very tough to hit. 55 strikeouts, only 10 walks in those 47 innings. Yeah, left-handed batters hitting 160, right-handed batters hitting 120. Uh, that's uh, let's get in here and uh, grind. Yeah, where do you go? Gallegos, who pitched yesterday, needed only 12 pitches to pitch a scoreless inning and face this part of the lineup. He faced Yastrzemski and Lamont Wade yesterday. He's got a different kind of delivery, and I think. The deception in that is part of the reason why he's so successful. It's not like he's throwing, he doesn't throw 100 like a lot of guys we see out of the bullpen these days. Just very tough to hit. Ball one. Stremski has two hits. His single last time up in the sixth inning really set it up for the Giants. They had first and third, nobody out. Game was one to one at that point. Took a big cut at the slider, one and one. Well, wow, that's a healthy hack and a pitch right down the middle. They got the ultra shift on him right here, too. It's not affecting his uh, launch angle right there. No. 
So you put the big overshift on plus you keep Arenado on the left side just in case you have ideas in a one run game of getting a bunt down. We've seen Yastrzemski do that in the past against a big shift. He's a very good bunter. That was a really good slider one and two. Fastball, did he go? Yes, he did. According to Jim Reynolds, that's strike three. Yeah, it's, that's tough. Let's see how, how far he went here. That is some almost Cole Minter esque tomahawk axe throwing. He, man, just shifted the hips a little too far. It really is. It does remind me. I mean, it's 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 better, bigger stuff than Cole Mentor. It was a starter, different. Kind of pitcher, but it is that kind of over the top, extreme over the top delivery. So now Lamont Wade Jr., who struck out as a pinch hitter in a big spot in the sixth inning, now against Gallegos here in the eighth. Wow. Nasty. That pitch is dropping off the table. And it, it's it's a big movement and it's pretty late. I can see why now I can see why the averages are so low. That's a special pitch. The 0 one through another one this time Wade. Wow did they call that a swing Jim Reynolds. Everything's a swing with Jim. I thought he held up that time. 0 and 2. Both of them were definitely close close. That is a tough call. Spike that one. Eight home runs for Lamont Wade Jr. He's only had 122 at bats. Giants down by a run here in the eighth inning. Trying to go up with that fastball and sort of tailed outside. Two and two. Yeah, he's he's sitting at around an 834, 830 OPS, and that's that's getting that's getting some damage in there. I love his swing. I like this approach. He is a good player. He's seen that curveball a couple times now. I wonder if he can make an adjustment. Oh, he might be coming up, Peter, huh? Let's see. They did go up with the fastball. He got a piece of it. That's where they got him in the sixth inning. Ryan Helsley was throwing 99. Got him with a high fastball. That foul ball right there is next level hand eye. That's quick hands. It's tough to foul that pitch off, and that can change the whole bat the whole inning. Let's see if he gets a better one to hit. Molina wants that breaking ball again. 2-2. Two -two. That one. To left field, Arenado chugging after it into foul ground, and he can't catch it. It's a foul ball. Good effort. Might be the first time I've ever seen Arenado not catch one of the Giants' foul balls over there. Anywhere near a tarp, we figure Arenado is going to catch it. There's a first time for everything. <laughs> Tired of him catching all those foul balls over there, but he's he's chugging away. That's a long run and a hot summer day out there. He had a chance though. I think you're right. 
That's such a hard play. That's such an insane for the brain to be running and diving over your head like that. He hit that warning track pretty hard too. He didn't look full his normal stride right there. No. But Wade was on that pitch. That was a healthy hack at the breaking ball. He's getting he's he's starting to dial in the rhythm. He's having a good at bat here. 2 2. High fastball, and he went around strike three. Tipster makes a call himself. Two down. Could not lay off. So two down, and now a word via WebEx by Cisco. We need a part. It's nearly done. Can you repeat that? That's better. It's done. With WebEx, the McLaren Formula One team is collaborating like never before. Introducing the WebEx Suite, driving hybrid work. Wilmer Flores with two down and the base is empty. Giants trail two to one. It's the eighth inning. The deciding game of this three game series in St. Louis after the All Star break. A high slider there called a strike to Wilmer. Who I think was feeling a little picked on early in the game. He was called out on strikes two different times, both real borderline pitches. Flores 0 for 3 today. Brandon Crawford is on deck. He'd be next here in the eighth. That slider is ripped and foul beyond the reach of Arenado. But just foul. It's 0 2. Yeah, he came up hunting that curveball. He got it and he just pulled it foul. So now it's 0 2 to Wilmer Flores. Giants have not had a hit against the Cardinals bullpen today since they got LeBlanc out of the game. Good take. Molina would like that pitch again. Two and two. You notice Yachty got kind of close to him because you feel he wanted you to feel him inside. He called the fastball away. He's playing those little mind games with him. Yep, just see if Wilmer could sense, okay, maybe they're setting up in. That's why he did it, 100%. Cat and mouse. He's a master at it. Two two and Gallegos wasn't ready. Called the fastball, touched the dirt. He's he's <laughs> pulling all the stops on Wilmer. Well, Flores, I think more than any Giants hitter we've seen these last couple days, seeing the ball pretty well against Gallegos. Two two. And he drills that one down the right field line, but foul. Pretty good battle here. He's had a he, he hasn't got but one pitch at the heart of the plate. The first pitch in this at bat was called a strike. This curveball at the top of the zone, and the one one pitch at the heart of the plate was in the first pitch 98. His last at bat, so he's putting up some good swings here for sure. Trying to get Crawford up there in a spot where Crawford could tie the game or more. Two two. Fastball. That one came in. Now you're earning your ball, your, your mistake pitch. When you fought off this many tough pitches, he's earning it. Can he get it, Fleming? Can he get it? Well, Yadier also, I mean, you can tell he's trying to grind this thing out, too. I think he knows that Wilmer 
He's a dangerous hitter right now. Looking at the swings and the at bat, the curveball he's on more than the fastball. Well, but he's going to go to it. All right, let's see. Can he get one up? 2 2. Great take. What an at bat. What a pitch. Great call by Yachty, too, to be a ball. He wanted that for a ball. He did not want that to be a strike. So Wilmer Flores has worked the count full here. Gonna throw that pitch again. Three and two. He got a hanger and he pulled it foul. <laughs> that was, I knew was that was a it. good I knew that was a good pitch for Wilmer right there, and he got his one in the middle and he rips it. What an at bat. He'll see a ninth pitch. I mean, out of here, he is taking his time. I couldn't believe he called a curveball right there, but he knows he's Yachty. Yeah, it was. Yeah, now he's gonna. He's, he knows flow. See, he does this rhythm thing where he messes. He, when you're locked in, he wants to like freeze you a little bit, like ice in the kicker. He knows. Now you're you lose your your feel and the rhythm, your timing and. You got to reset everything as a hitter. Smart. Almost seems like to me he wants to call that slider again, but he knows you cannot leave it out over the plate against Wilmer Flores right now. We'll see. It's going to be tough. It could go either way right now. That's the fun of the, of this time in the in the game and in a bat like this. I think I, I think fastball, but Yachty, he's a. Oh yeah. No signs here. No signs. Another 3 2. It came in and it hit him. It was going to be ball four anyway. He threw the slider and Wilmer Flores, man, did he earn that. That's a heck of an at bat in a big situation. Grinding the pitcher. He's thrown a lot of pitches and ninth pitch. I hope he's okay because that hurts. So that is the tying run. And you got a guy who can do more than that with one swing. Brandon Crawford, Giants home run leader. We're working on our 21st pitch here, thanks to Flores. And that's a big deal. Pitching on back to back days. Gallegos trying to dig deep. Crawford. Foul ball. Well, you love having Crawford up in a spot with somebody on base, even if it's just a runner at first base. With all the extra base power that Crawford's had, outfield playing very deep for the Cardinals. One and one. Very nice, soft take on that pitch everyone's checking at. He's just locked in elite, elite at bats. And that, to take that so softly means he is seeing it well. Yeah, Yastrzemski and Wade, two left handed hitters, were flinching, checking on that same pitch, not Crawford. A 1 1. Call the ball. Good looking slider right toward the outside. You get those calls when you're when you're having the kind of half that he's having. The borderline could go either way. And he's also just super quiet. When you take it quietly, I've never had that advantage because I was so loud in the box, but Crawford just nice and quiet. Two one Crawford foul that slider off two and two. I 
You got Arnauto way off the line at third. Nobody at third base. Arnauto is basically playing shortstop. And Crawford's got all the pull power, but he will. If you just stay away, 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 he'll slash at a ball, hit it to left field. The 2 2. Fastball got him swinging. So Gallegos gets through it. Ends up striking out three. Middle of the eighth. The big hitters coming up for the Cardinals who lead two to one. Weekend first game, I say, here in San Francisco, where we are today at Oracle Park. First uh, home series after the All Star break for the Giants. Three games. Saturday is a 6 05 start. And the first 15,000 fans get a loose seal flipper beanie presented by StubHub. Just what you've always wanted. SFGiants.com, the place to go. Giants Pirates hope to see you here Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I would love a flipper beanie. <laughs> I love funny hats. They're fun and you, they're funny. You better be here on Saturday then. Because those things are going to go. Two to one Cardinals, bottom eight. And Jay Jackson. He just got called up before this series. Giants are using him in some big spots right away. And we said it before against the Cardinals, you got to have right handers out of the bullpen. So Jay Jackson against the big boys Goldschmidt, Arenado, O'Neill. Great test for the veteran. Trying to keep this a one run game. Slider, we'll see that a lot from Jackson, ball one. He throws his slider. Then he throws his slider and then he usually throws another slider. I've known a lot of pitchers that have done really well with using their slider to set up their fastball. Got Goldschmidt to hit the slider to right field. Yastrzemski for out number one. He did it the other night. Jay Jackson came in when the game was starting to get a little weird. Giants had the, the lead but. The Cardinals built a rally and he threw one slider after another and then got strike three on a fastball one of the best pitches of the series for the Giants. Yeah if you can locate your slider and, and use it as your main pitch you you can succeed you know we've seen Sergio Romo I remember Brad Lidge uh, when he was throwing ninety eight he, he maybe had better numbers throwing ninety ninety one pitching off the slider. Arenado fouls that first pitch fastball back. Giants in the ninth inning have Talkman, Trump, and the pitcher spot do. The Giants, of course, do have some cards to play off the bench still, though. They've got Duggar, they've got Dickerson, to name a couple. Arnado hits the fastball high and deep and foul. It's a long strike. Now you got a mode too. Got a lot of pitches to work with here. Alex Reyes Cardinals closer is getting ready in the bullpen so that's who the Giants are going to see in the ninth inning an all star slider strike three called. Almost like a little backup slider that froze Arenado. Sneaky two strike front door. You never you never check the front door with two strikes on the slider. Usually they're coming to heater in to get you off. So kind of got away with one. The front door slider is a dangerous pitch, but uh, he got him. It worked. Got the call. Got the got the out. We'll take it. Got a baby Jay. So now two down Tyler O'Neill one for three. He's had some good swings in this series. Takes high ball one. He might be first team all quads. I think so. And hamstrings for that matter. Glutes maybe. Biceps. <laughs> Lats. I 
Hasn't had a carb in over a month. <laughs> Big play in this game was Tyler O'Neill on defense. Slider for strike two. Donovan Solano looked to me like he had untied the game and put the Giants ahead off the bat. And O'Neill put it in his back pocket for out number three. Kept the game tied. Now the Cardinals are ahead. That was back in the seventh inning. See, he's vibrating with a nice crystal around the neck. One two slider. If it had been Jim Reynolds he would have said swing but that's Tony Randazzo over there. And we need to get the lefty check swings left handed hitter don't check your swing today because it's going to be a strike. Two two. Got away with one there. I was middle middle. And I was a healthy hack. So he's working with the axe handle as well on that bat. High fastball popped up. And that's back into the seats. You ever fiddle around with the axe handle? I tried it very briefly. It's it's not for me. Have you ever held a, one of the axe axe bats? It's a weird swing. And he's kind of his setup is a little strange too with how he's doing his little his rhythm. And the theory behind the axe handle in your mind is. I have no idea. I couldn't figure it out. I, didn't, I was like, I don't know what to do with this. But there's a lot of people who've done really well with it. Yeah. 2-2. Two, two. Fastball, strike three called. Tell you what, Jay Jackson's made some big pitches for the Giants this weekend. The closer coming in. Giants need a run. On to the ninth we go. 2-1 to one Cardinals. New kind of Giants pre post show every Sunday Giants summer Sunday before and after every Sunday Giants game all summer long and coming up next right here on NBC Sports Bay Area Therese Anthony and Cole there today on the rooftop. Farewell Arnato farewell Goldschmidt Therese I can't well I'm thinking we might see a cartwheel. Yeah I'm ready to see a cartwheel I just want the Giants to come back. They put up some great at bats. There's been a lot of. It's been a good game. They pitched outstanding. Uh, you know, you were saying in the break that it's a check swing that's the difference in the game. Cardinals scored the go-ahead run on a check swing ground ball. And look, give the Cardinals credit. They've had some good situational at bats. But now the task is not easy for the Giants. The All-Star closer Alex Reyes, who in his young career has had 23 save opportunities, he's converted all of them. So he's a time for a first though. This is his 40th appearance of the year a 1 4 9 ERA. We saw him yesterday Giants built a rally against him just couldn't cash it in. Mike Talkman is going to try to get the Giants started here in the ninth inning. With Alex Dickerson now in the on deck circle. Giants have Steven Duggar available as well. Two to one Cardinals. It has been a really well played well pitched game. Talkman rips that first pitch a fair ball and Goldschmidt's got it one pitch one out to start the ninth inning. Yeah, you just want to go good A.B.'s good A.B.'s good A.B.'s and this is a good swing on a good pitch and you know almost gets one down the line Goldschmidt's playing no doubles and happens to just be right there man. Talkman's hit pinball. He had, a, he had a pinball machine that went to first baseman to second baseman back to pitcher who fell down. Now he just got right at down the everywhere he's hit. He hit it up the middle. They were shifted him up the middle. He needs uh, he needs to you know do something to switch that mojo. He, he's thinking is there a hole out there. He's tried everything big curveball. Alex Dickerson takes it high. 
Well Alex has had a flair for the dramatic in his Giants career eight home runs. One thing Alex Reyes does very well he keeps the ball in the ballpark. That's a change up at 88 for strike one swinging. Only two home runs allowed in 43 innings pitched this year for Reyes. Did not get the call there. Two and one. Molina wanted it. The Giants this last couple innings have been getting the calls. They've been going their way and. Dickerson's a guy who can take anybody deep. I don't care how few homers you've given up. He's he's uh, he's electric. Ninety five just off the outside and now it's two and two. Only two hits this year as a pinch hitter for Alex Dickerson both of them home runs. 2 2 foul that one back out of play. Got a good pitch to hit right there. Just missed it. You know he wants that one back but staying in the moment. He's taking some big hacks as timing's on. Just get that pitch over the middle. Change up in the dirt. Three and two. The Giants have had a lot of at bats like this today. A lot of full counts, deep counts, just have not cashed in on many of them. Three and two to Alex Dickerson. Another change up. Grinding, grinding hard right now, Fleming. I love to see it. On both sides. Both sides are grinding. These ABs, though, these last two innings have been top notch. Really have been. Remember, Flores had a great one. 3 2. Ball four. Alex Dickerson gets the tying run on base. Very well done by Alex. 97 mile an hour fastball, but it's a walk. And now Steven Duggar comes up. Adding to the pitcher, Jackson, number six, Steven Duggar. He's got that look in his eye, Fleming. He does. You know, he's had a lot of late game hits for the Giants. Steven Duggar has a confidence about him that he never had as a younger player. He's also been a great fastball hitter. So we'll see if Molina sticks with the scouting report and stays away from the fastball or maybe if Duggar gets one to hit. Change up. Yeah, he likes race likes his change up and he threw a lot of them to Dickerson. First pitch change up to Duggar. Randy Wynn made a good point yesterday with us. Alex Reyes wants to and thinks he will be a starting pitcher again. So especially by the standards of closers he's got a lot of weapons and he wants to use them all. He sort of has that starting pitcher mentality in the ninth inning. Good take on the real sharp curveball. Just a little more jumpy than you want. Just quiet it down a little bit, and that might be why he's kind of touching his backside. Stay back. I hope. Six home runs for Steven Duggar this year. Eleven doubles, couple triples. One one. Two and one. Yeah, and he did it right there. He softened up. That's the that's the quiet take. I think that's what he was kind of doing. He's he's got some swing and miss in his game still, but man, his approach this year, he has commanded the strike zone as a hitter. You got Slater who does the same thing, waiting on deck. 
two one. Took it the change up low three and one maybe that was a hard slider Yadier Molina is coming out again. Those are amazing takes and you can tell he's intentional with his timing and he's and when you're taking them soft that means you're locked in. In a big moment the heart beats slow. You know I know it doesn't make you feel a lot better if you end up losing the game but the Giants no matter what happens here they have had so many at bats like this today against big time stuff I know they didn't execute situationally a couple times with a runner at third base but yeah here in this moment we're getting good A.B.'s and that's what you want to see and they're giving ourselves we're, we're giving the Giants are giving themselves a chance to win the ball game and opportunities tying run at first one out ninth inning a good hitters count for Steven Duggar three and one Molina back behind home plate. Reyes in the dirt ball for Duggar draws the walk back to back walks for the Giants now the tying run is in scoring position the go ahead run with great speed is at first and you get back to the top of the lineup calm confidence that's what you want to see just calmly taking it I've said it a lot but that was an impressive A.B. setting up his man has a good friend big Austin Slater. That's what that's what Austin when he's locked in he does it as well as any Giants hitter. Two on one out. Slater peels that one off to the right Goldschmidt coming over but he can't quite get there. Slater. A lot of times we've seen him use right field in at bats like this. It's a lot of hits right over the second baseman fighting the good fight inside it. We're okay. winning the time of possession. Yep. Very true. Giants talk about that a lot. It's part of the, the core philosophy of this team. Oh, one Slater drills that one to right field going back on it quickly Carlson all the way back to make the catch. Dickerson stays at second two down. Well Austin Slater hit that ball hard. Giants down to their final out Donovan Solano who's got a great swing going right now two for four plus robbed of extra bases his last time up in one of the key moments of this game. I thought Dickerson might go back and tag. That was one of those tweeners and you have to score so I could see why he didn't necessarily tag as a time run. Yep. In that particular situation it's a little bit tougher. Swing and a miss strike one. Solano's kind of owed one after crushing a ball in a good spot you know so. I think so. You know. The baseball gods exist. Tying run at second. Go ahead, run at first. Two down, ninth inning. What a series these two teams have played. Got the call, and now the Giants are down to their final strike. Two. Solano to center field. Bader is there. And he'll make the catch. The ball game is over. And the Cardinals survive to take the game and the series from the Giants. Two to one the final, and they win the series two games to one. Man, the Cardinals have played the Giants tough this year. And Hunter, the Giants fought to the very end, but Reyes and the Cardinals bullpen just good enough today. Yes they did they fought hard that was a, that was a good ball game and uh, just come up short on uh, you know there in the ninth inning couple situations the Giants will look back on first inning bases loaded one out sixth inning first and third nobody out and they could not score in either of those and ends up 
that may be the difference today. Yeah, well, you know, you're definitely going to be on the flight, kind of, kind of running those at bats through your mind. But I mean, they, they the Cardinals pitched outstanding, and you got to sometimes tip your cap. Wade LeBlanc, you know, he had that really late movement and uh, gave him, you know, a really good start. Johnny Cueto as well. So two to one, the final score. The Cardinals beat the Giants. Thanks for joining us. Great to have Hunter Pence with us today. For all of us, Dave Fleming saying so long. Stay tuned for Giants Summer Sunday presented by Toyota. That starts right now.